Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 13 for August the 30th, 2020. We're still in Unit 3, entitled Faith and Wisdom in James. And our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Wise Up. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 32, uh, verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is taken from the book of James, chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 18, and also James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. And our print passage today is also from the book of James, chapter 3, uh, verses 13 through 18, and then James, chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. Our key verse reads, the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. That's taken from James chapter 3, uh, verse 17 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explain the value of acting with wisdom from above and with patience in the midst of trials. Secondly, to repent of actions that have been done out of earthly wisdom and lack of patience. And then thirdly, to embrace wisdom from God and seek to demonstrate it consistently and patiently. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled, Two Kinds of Wisdom. Our second outline uh, is entitled, Be Patient, and then our third outline is entitled, Act Like It. And so we certainly thank, thank and praise God that we are able to come uh, back uh, with you again to uh, study our Sunday School lesson. As always, we ask you to prepare yourself uh, with your Bible. Um, and be prepared to take some notes, some scripture references that we want to give you. And we certainly thank God for keeping us alive. Uh, we certainly are still praying. Uh, we are in some uh, turbulent times in our culture and we are just praying for our country and its leaders, praying for those on the front line and, and hopefully uh, by the end of our lesson today, as always, we want to have prayer. Uh, we, we need to keep the, the engagement of prayer uh, active, um, that the Lord might sustain us. Uh, this is not uh, the first issue that we have faced, and it won't be the last, but certainly the same God that brought us through. Uh, all of the other challenges and crises in our lives uh, will be the same God that brings us through this one. So we want to keep those things in mind. We have quite a bit that we want to unpack for you today. Uh, we are coming to the close of our summer quarter uh, in our lessons from the book of James. And so we want to get right to our biblical context. Uh, in chapter 3 of his letter, James expanded upon his previous comments concerning the bridling of the tongue in James chapter 1 verse 26. Uh, we studied James chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 12 last week focusing on the destructive powers of the tongue and so um, we ended the lesson uh, last week seemingly with no way to bridle the tongue so in the opening uh, section of today's lesson, James chapter 3, verses 13 through 18, uh, James uh, gave some solution to the unbridled tongue problem. Uh, we just want to mention here that uh, James uh, wrote that those who are practicing true, pure, and undefiled religion before God would bridle their tongue. And so, um, we also note that uh, the next few messages from James are about choosing the right path and practicing godliness that is pleasing to God. 
Uh, and so now James has moved toward um, uh, giving us some principles how we ought to conduct ourselves. Um, and we note here that each of us is born with an instrument that that can create great damage or great good. And so uh, James is doing is going to teach us about how we uh, use our tongues, uh, what we say. Uh, and so as we get into this lesson today, we're going to unpack the two kinds of wisdom uh, that uh, are revealed to us. But I want to just touch on the fact of, uh, as I was studying this lesson, I was thinking about the date of this book and the occasion uh, that uh, James uh, um, embarks upon these various outlines here. Um, uh, we want to note that this is a Jewish gospel, but uh, we want to date this book uh, between A.D. 44. Uh, this would have been the beginning of the persecution that spread to the diaspora. And I would also encourage you to uh, read Acts chapter 12. Uh, would give you some uh, perspective. Uh, but uh, as we said, uh, we want to make sure that we understand that we were we are studying uh, a message that James is delivering to uh, those tribes, the twelve tribes that have been scattered abroad. You'll see that back over in James chapter one. And so I want to make mention of the fact that these people were literally running for their lives. Uh, they were being persecuted in a way that we probably cannot understand. Uh, they were going through things uh, to get caught. Uh, if you look back over in Acts chapter 12, uh, if you got caught up in this thing uh, in the early church of being persecuted, you will literally be put to death. Uh, but James uh, doesn't have a pity party about these circumstances uh, in the five outlines uh, that uh, reveal or unpack the book of James. James is still pushing and challenging his audience about their living faith um, tested by trial, their living faith proved by works, their living faith evidenced by conduct. That's in chapters 3 and 4 and we're going to unpack those for you today. And then finally, finally, a living faith exercised by persecution. Uh, why am I sharing this with you? It's because we are going through some things today, but we don't get a pass, uh, if you will, from the Spirit of God. We are still required to live out our faith in spite of what we're going through. And so this is what James is really unpacking. Uh, the book of James is unpacking for us today and, and, and challenging uh, 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 the hearers, the Jews that are running for their lives to still conduct themselves like Christians in every area or facet of their lives. And I think that's something worth noting here. Uh, and so many times when we are facing challenges in our lives, uh, if our faith is not certain or it's not grounded, uh, typically we tend to move as the sun shines, if you will. We tend to move as the blessings flow. We tend to move as things uh, uh, present themselves to be more comfortable. But the challenge for us as Christians is to be able to live out our faith in the most difficult uh, 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 life-threatening circumstances amid unprecedented uh, suffering. Uh, we are challenged today to emulate uh, the type of messages that James is uh, uh, laying out for the Jews and and certainly uh, uh, we are challenged to conduct ourselves uh, in a manner that is pleasing to God in the face of the most horrific trials. I want you to keep that in mind. That is the basis of this writing here. The context, if you will, 
uh, and I, I, I don't want you to think that these people were somewhere sitting on top of the hill uh, uh, with the sun shining in their faces uh, 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 to the contrary they were in the valley they were in the lowest of lowest places uh, uh, spiritually they were literally living in uh, uh, uncertain times of uh, their circumstances and of their very lives uh, but the first outline is entitled two kinds of wisdom uh, this is taken from James chapter 3 verses 13 through 18 I want to read this from the NIV translation the Bible says who is wise and understanding among you let them show it by their good life by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom verse 14 but if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Verse 16. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. Verse 17, but the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Verse 18, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. And want to just stop right there. Uh, and so again, James is 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 is. Uh, 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 highlighting the fact or scolding if you will uh, uh, the hearers uh, who who are already going through difficult times James is asking the question who is wise and understanding among you that's a very good question uh, and I just want us to note here that that all of us whether we are uh, saved or whatever we are professing to be we are all infused by a force or a, 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 a power source if you will uh, we are infused by the entity uh, by which we serve or, or, or that our faith rests in or that we are guided by we all have some root of where we are getting our a uh, 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 wisdom from or how we are conducting ourselves and this is what James is is, is getting at here uh, as he asked this question uh, this was really a setup question those who identified themselves as wise uh, would really be identifying themselves not as being wise at all based on God's wisdom uh, James knew about the the bad behavior of some in the early church so that's why verse 14 uh, he scolded those who were extremely self-centered uh, their behavior was nothing to be proud of as a matter of fact such behavior was not of God it was a work of the devil so uh, uh, all of us have a tendency to be used by if we do not follow uh, 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 the the spirit of God then the the spirit of, of, of the evil one or of the devil will use you uh, it doesn't matter who you are and how saved you think you are uh, 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 and that may very well be the case uh, how long you have been saved and these types of things that we ascribe to the devil doesn't care about any of those things he's looking for a weakness but uh, as we unpack this uh, earthly wisdom, I, I want you to be prepared because I want to give you some scriptures to support our findings here. But the wise man, the technical term for teacher, as well as every believer, must choose, choose uh, which wisdom will control his earthly or heavenly uh, 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 life, as it as it as it were. So. Uh, earthly wisdom cannot produce a truly wise teacher endued with discreet knowledge who demonstrates by good behavior his works with genuine humility. 
Uh, it rather produces bitter jealousy and selfish ambition, boasting uh, and disloyalty to the truth. So to the word of God as centered in Jesus Christ. I want you to look at John chapter 14 verse 6 and Ephesians chapter 4 verse 21. So moreover, such wisdom is not from above, not taught by the Holy Spirit. I want you to look at St. John chapter 16 verse 13. Uh, rather, it is earthly belonging purely to this natural terrestrial sphere. So it is sensual or animal-like, uh, the learning of the natural, unregenerate, uh, purely soulish man. I, I want you to look at Jude verse 19 and is demonic having its origin in satanic activity. I also want you to look at 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 5 and then the first epistle of John chapter 4 verses 1 through 4. So as a result such wisdom produces confusion and every evil work. And I also want to give you Galatians chapter 5 verses 17 through 21. So it's important to understand that uh, uh, as you look at the confusion uh, or, or the strife among us or the bitter uh, the selfishness or the ambition that we have, the self-centeredness of, of, of individuals uh, who pride themselves uh, on uh, uh, just thinking about what is in it for them, what is best, how they are best served. Uh, these types of infusion of this type of wisdom is not from God. That's what James is telling us here. So there are two kinds of wisdom. This first one is purely uh, uh, has the the markings of of satanic activity, uh, and, and so it doesn't mean it has to stay that way, but it reveals to us where it's coming from that this is not the spirit of God, but rather it is the uh, the spirit of error, uh, and so. Uh, James is admonishing these Jews, don't be boasting about this thing. This is not good. Don't be patting yourself on the back as though you have acted in a way, even though you might believe that you are right. But it is, it is, a, is, it a, it is an affront uh, to the word of God, to the spirit of God, to the character, if you will, of God. And so if we're not careful, uh, the devil will trip us up in these areas and we will think that we will be doing things that are of God uh, but actually they are not and so if we contrast this uh, type of activity we have a, a shift in verse 17 that it says but the wisdom that comes down from above is first of all pure then peace loving considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This is a different character trait. This is a different infusion, if you will, of the Spirit of God operating in that individual. So the teacher uh, uh, and every believer is to be controlled by uh, heavenly wisdom. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 uh, verses 6 and 7. Uh, this is, is divine in its origin literally from above. Emphatic wisdom. It is pure in the sense of being uh, chastely modest, blameless from the sin of intellectual pride, so characteristic of teachers. Right? Peaceable attending to tranquility and concord, not divisive or heretic, considerate, patiently mild, so as always to be modestly fair and reasonable. Uh, uh, this is the individual who is submissive uh, uh, or being pliant, if you will, uh, so as always to be bendable to further truth and increase light, full of mercy and good fruits, I want you to look at uh, fruit of the spirit, Galatians chapter five, verses twenty-two and twenty-three. 
impartial manifesting conviction on matters of truth, sincere, stripped of the actor's role and utterly without hypocrisy, true or heavenly wisdom which has righteousness as its fruit sown in peace because possessors of this wisdom are those who make peace. And I hope that makes sense for us today to contrast these two uh, 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 infusions, if you will, uh, of, of, uh, of wisdom uh, 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 to help us to understand that uh, these things are either the works of the devil or they are the works of God. And we need to know that today. We need to unpack these things today. And so we need to be mindful that the devil is always looking for an opportunity uh, to cause us to, uh, to stumble and fall, to get away uh, from the truth. So James wanted these hearers to know that their behavior was nothing to be proud of. As a matter of fact, such behavior was not from God. It was the work of the devil. Such behavior evidences itself in disorder and bad behavior. That is why the apostles, especially uh, the apostle Paul, had to intervene to calm the masses in the early church. So sometimes uh, when we see these things happen, uh, we always want to know in society why individual conducts themselves uh, in the manner that they do. Why do, why do they do the things that they do? Well, here it's clear. Uh, the devil is at work. The devil is at play. And if you offer yourself or yield yourself to the enemy, he will use you uh, not only in, in word, but also in deeds. This is why James is talking about uh, and, and we studied uh, early on in, in uh, uh, the book of James about our tongues, how we use them uh, to be a blessing or a cursing, how we allow the things that, that uh, we say to get us further into trouble. And we believe uh, because we are the loudest talkers, if you will, are we are spewing out uh, uh, all of this different type of intellect that somehow it is of God. But if it doesn't sow or it is not sown in peace, uh, it's not pure, it's not peace loving, it's not considerate, uh, it's not submissive, it has no mercy in it, it's, there's no good fruit, uh, it's bias, it's, it's, it, it lacks sincerity. These things are not of God and we need to understand that today. This is very clear uh, for James hearers and it also is very practical. So uh, the question is asked, how would you explain to a non-Christian uh, that conventional wisdom does not always supply the answers to life's questions? And this is how sometimes we get ourselves into trouble uh, uh, believing that we know the best way uh, of doing a particular thing and, and without uh, uh, consulting the Word of God and we have to explain uh, the two sides of the coin if you will to uh, non-Christian we have to help them to understand that they are susceptible uh, to the infusion of the enemy that they are, are vessels of his uh, 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 if they are not going to be vessels of God and the enemy will use you in every facet so it doesn't matter uh, uh, about uh, how educated you might believe that you are. As I said earlier, the devil is not impressed by those things. You do not, without the aid of the Holy Spirit, do not have sufficient capacity nor power to save yourself, to help yourself. This is why we call on the name of the Lord in the battle and the struggle because uh, uh, we need help with ourselves. We need help with our conduct we need help and we need to uh, uh, yield ourselves to the Spirit of God uh, if we are not going to allow God to have the right of way in our lives then we know the enemy is going to use us and so we just need to help non-Christian uh, 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 understand that uh, this conventional wisdom it does not always apply uh, or supply the answers to life's questions but the word of God does and so we need to understand that today very good 
uh, points here about who's using us, right? Uh, what are we manifesting? Uh, and, and I don't want you to be alarmed by this because we all have weaknesses, right? We, we all are, are work in progress. And these are the things that the, that the Holy Spirit, if I can explain it to you this way, is combating every day in our lives, is, is, is putting to death, mortifying uh, the old uh, you that the new you might take shape. Uh, and you need to let him have his way uh, in your life. Uh, you need to let him work the work that he is working in your life so you'll be more conducive to the will of God, to the purposes of God, as opposed to the will of the enemy. Uh, I want to keep that in mind. But our next outline is entitled, Be Patient. And again, from the uh, NIV translation, this is taken from James chapter 5, verses 7 uh, through 9. The Bible says, be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. Verse 8, you too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. So again, this is probably one of those areas where we get into a lot of trouble by not standing down and waiting on God or using our own intellect to overstep, to intervene, uh, uh, to, to make sure that we are right or we come out on top of this thing. Uh, and so James is admonishing and uh, 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 in this distinguishing here of brothers and sisters literally family members in the body of Christ keep in mind these are things uh, James apparently was aware of some issues in the early church but that's what we are right we are we are uh, brothers and sisters in Christ we have to be patient with one another we have to be patient uh, with the Lord working in the others life to bring them up to speed if you will or to mature them uh, and that takes time so uh, he talks about waiting and this is a very difficult aspect uh, of life as a Christian and that is waiting on God oh my goodness if we could talk about that uh, we would be on this subject from from now on because all of us at some point even right now we're waiting on God to intervene we're waiting on God to do something. We're waiting on God to answer our prayers. and We're waiting on God for so many different things. But what we're really waiting on is the truth. We're waiting on the truth to come out. And that is one of the hardest things. Uh, those of you that understand the, uh, 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 the issue of someone lying on you uh, uh, and you want to hurry up and write that wrong and you want to hurry up and say something uh, uh, but sometimes uh, as I found in my personal experience uh, waiting on the truth uh, is a very challenging experience to wait on the reality of the of God's word to come to pass uh, uh, and so James is admonishing his hearers here to be patient right wait for the Lord he says, you too, as the farmer waits uh, for the rain that his crops might spring forth, he says, you too be patient and stand firm. Stand firm in what? Stand firm in the word of God. Stand firm in the power of God. Stand firm in the position that God has uh, uh, put you in or has allowed to come up on you he said because the Lord's coming is near right and 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 I know uh, uh, I know we want it fixed before then right uh, uh, but again we have to wait on the Lord to intervene he says don't grumble this is the humility uh, of, 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 of how God allows things to uh, uh, get us into the position that God wants to be uh, wants us to be in and I would just say this to you and I've learned this over the years uh, particularly about circumstances that I want to get out of 
uh, conditions that I want lifted in my life circumstances even with other people other relationships and things like that that we want change we want God to do something let me ask you a question what do you do what do you do in the meantime since we have to wait what are we doing in the meantime and one of the things that I've found to be helpful for me is to journal uh, what I'm learning I have a lot of notes uh, that I take I write down sometimes what I'm learning I keep mental notes I remember things uh, as though I had uh, pinned them uh, and sometimes when you're going through a trial that uh, uh, you believe that God should have delivered you by now or he should have answered you I want you to journal what you're learning I want you to write down some things that you're learning I don't want you to treat the process as though it's stagnant and though you are stagnant and God is stagnant and God is not moving because he's not answering you and ask yourself these questions am I changing all right is God developing me as my attitude being adjusted uh, 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 is my temperance being adjusted uh, 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 these things as James would say it, it says in the first chapter he said let endurance have its perfect result so that you won't lack anything or that you will lack nothing and so uh, many times what the Spirit of God is doing in the delay process is developing you or developing me or developing us into what he wants us to be uh, think about a, a, a dinner that you might prepare uh, as opposed to uh, if you if you cook the dinner uh, on the stove but you cook the dinner in the microwave and many times we want our meals microwave we want our blessings microwave and God is trying to cook on the stove if you will God is preparing a meal on the stove that takes a little bit more time a little more seasoning a little more preparation but we want that right now thing and sometimes when we get that right now microwave type of situation we're not developed uh, we don't have the stamina for the next trial we don't have the uh, the patience for the next endeavor uh, we we are not uh, aptly qualified spiritually for the blessing that we are asking God uh, to present us with there are myriad of things that could be happening in your life and this is where your journal is going to uh, come into play to help you and to help remind you that you still have things that God needs to work out in your life I still have things that God needs to develop in me so patience is is a, is a type of thing that God uses and, it, and it, I, I know in our minds and in our hearts it, uh, and I can hear you now Reverend it's been two years it's been five years and God should have did something by now it's, it's been ten years and but but that's not the way God calculates things right so we are being developed uh, that's that's the point I want to help you uh, to understand so in the early church believers faced intense persecution right they lived at a time when worshiping God was literally a death sentence James connected the idea of being patient and suffering uh, with waiting on the Lord's second coming taking a very practical approach is teaching James used the example of the farmers patient so we read that so uh, James exhorted believers to have the same uh, farmer patience they too had little control over the outcome of their spiritual harvest that's something we need to understand we, if, if you can't control a situation right you and I are not in control of that thing how can we make that harvest uh, become readily available uh, 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 on, a, on a whim and so no matter what the circumstance James called on the believers to stand firm and I want you to look at 1st Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58 stand firm in their faith why they did not know when Jesus was returning and they did not need to be caught unready yes their trials uh, were and would be tough and yet James told them not to grumble about their adverse circumstances 
judgment awaited those who did. I want to give you 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 2. I also want to give you Matthew chapter 10 verse 17 and 18. Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 20. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 12 and chapter 5 verse 9. The question is asked here what are some ways we find triumph over trials and difficulties? I just wrote down a few things here. Number one uh, we can always love one another right? This is one way that we can triumph over our trials. We can show forth the love uh, whereas the world or that infusion that that satanic uh, motive would not do. We can also learn to do a better job of forgiving in, in the face of, of, of trials in terms of triumph. Uh, get rid of some excess baggage if you will of unforgiveness in our hearts. And then the third thing I wrote here was to abide in the truth. This is something that we uh, readily need to engage in no matter what the circumstances of our trials present keep your face in the Word of God no matter what stay afresh uh, uh, we cannot uh, 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 you know rely on the same appetite if you will of scripture uh, learn to digest a little bit more than you did on yesterday engage in more study activity uh, in the Word of God as best you can abide as Jesus says to his disciples in John chapter 15 we have to abide so we don't grow, re uh, grow weak and and get dry in our spirits or get dry in our conduct uh, 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 and, 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 and if you do if you if you don't do that you know what you'll have you'll have a bag of excuses you will still say you didn't know when the opportunity presented itself for you to know you didn't take it up on yourself to learn the Word of God so abiding in truth is, is key uh, in terms of uh, triumph over trials uh, don't uh, don't lie there for the enemy if you will because he he won't just walk away because he sees you down he will kick you uh, because you're down uh, because you are vulnerable so stay afresh in the Word of God and the last outline is entitled act like it this is taken from uh, James chapter 5 verses 10 through 12 and again from the NIV translation the Bible says brothers and sisters as an example of patience in the face of suffering take the prophets who spoke of the name of the Lord and as you know we count as blessed those who have persevered you have heard of, the, of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion uh, and mercy and above all my brothers and sisters do not swear uh, not even not by heaven or by earth uh, or by anything else. All you need to say is a simple yes or no otherwise you will be condemned. So we want to unpack this for us a little bit today that we understand uh, uh, this 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 suffering uh, that has been ordained uh, by God through Jesus Christ for the believer right uh, we are going to have to go through some things uh, whether we understand that or whether we like that or not that's just the reality of it uh, if you study uh, both epistles of Peter uh, he adds uh, quite a bit of context uh, about different types of suffering uh, and we want to make sure that we understand that it is on the table right uh, it is ordained that we uh, go through some things uh, uh, in life uh, and so we are disciples of Christ and we are no better than he is uh, and so uh, we have to go through these things but and so uh, as you know we count as blessed those who persevered and you have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about and you all know that story how the Lord took him through various things but the Lord also uh, added uh, but I want to touch on this verse here uh, verse 12 
uh, from James chapter 5 talking about don't swear and there's a little bit more that I want to give you uh, to help us to understand uh, what's happening here um, so we don't miss the point here if our reference takes us back over to Matthew uh, chapter 5 I want you to take a look at uh, verses 10 through 12 but I want to go down to uh, Matthew chapter 5 verse 34 because this is something that Jesus was teaching on the Sermon on the Mount about these oaths here um, and Jesus says here in Matthew chapter 5 verse 34 but I say to you do not swear at all neither by heaven for it is God's throne nor by earth for it is his footstool nor by Jerusalem uh, for it is the city of the great king uh, nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black verse 37 says but let your yes be yes and your no no for whatever is more than these is from the evil one so if we dig a little bit deeper into this we want to underscore the fact that some people have understood Jesus prohibition to oaths to be universal but Jesus himself submitted to an oath this is in Matthew 26 63 and Paul invoked God as his witness in Romans chapter 1 verse 9 uh, also I want you to make make mention of the fact that God himself takes an oath so that we might be encouraged this is in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 so Jesus is addressing a narrow and misleading legalism that required a specific oath uh, to make spoke spoken words binding binding so the implication of such uh, an approach to honesty is that we do not need to be truthful except under oath so what Jesus is doing here he's demanding uh, an integrity of speech as though everything were under a oath so he also prohibited the implicit idolatry of swearing by anything less than God and so uh, again as we talk about uh, our works and we talk about our conduct and we talk about our tongues we talk about our speech everything that James lifts uh, in context uh, with what we're sharing with you now leads us to conclude that 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 we want to focus on the integrity of our speech this kind of aids in that conversation about our conduct we need to have integrity uh, in our speech surely we ought to be able to let our word as they used to say when I was a boy let your word be your bond you shouldn't have to take an oath uh, in order to be trusted you, you what you say uh, uh, you should mean uh, what you say and say what you mean this is the point we want to make sure that 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 we understand so having taken all of these things in context uh, we want to have proper conduct in our speech about the things that we say we're going to do uh, we don't want to be shady in our dealings and this is the type of thing that ruins the conduct uh, and too many times we we get into trouble uh, uh, into talking ourselves into things that uh, we're not going to actually do uh, and so our word uh, falls on deaf ears o over the time over the course of time and then we're not trustworthy uh, and so this this aids in the decline of conduct and so this is what we want to lift uh, for us today and make sure that we understand that James is pulling out all of the stops here if you will with these uh, Jewish audience here to help them model the kind of integrity that Christ would have them to to exhibit even though uh, they were going through things so we don't need to overcommit we don't need to overpromise. Uh, just speak the things that we're able to do and if we are not able to do those things we don't have to deceive one another uh, we don't have to lie to one another uh, we don't have to uh, shade the truth uh, just speak the things that we are going to be able to do uh, and so if we don't do that thing uh, and then we uh, one of the things that happens to us when we 
uh, when we say things that we don't mean and then we don't fulfill those things, how many times do we ever repent? Do we ask God to forgive us for saying that we were going to do something? And many times it's offensive to the to the to the individual who was expecting us to do a particular thing and we never apologize for those things. So you can see where I'm going here that the conduct of uh, or the relationship between brothers and sisters uh, uh, begins to decline and that is what we have to make sure that does not happen. Uh, we have to make sure that we continue to love one another, speak truth to one another, and be honest with yourself, be honest with your fellow man. This helps in the relationship and the building of that. This helps in uh, uh, the onlookers, if you will. We talked a little bit earlier about non-Christians, and this is the thing that happens because people are looking on or, uh, uh, and watching us. And so uh, in the face of adversity, James is still requiring conduct uh, that God would be pleased with in the lives of his brothers and sisters. And I know that uh, many of you are facing many things today. Um, I am uh, facing many challenges in my walk with the Lord even as I speak. But as we seek to close now, we want to pray. We want to pray for what you're going through. We want to pray that God will sustain you. We want to pray that you will take note of the fact that uh, God is working a work in your life. You may not understand it. Uh, but I do know this. God works from the inside out. He is always up to developing our characters as, as a Christian. He's up to developing us as disciples, as actual followers of Jesus Christ. He is actually developing us to think differently, uh, that we might do differently. Uh, he's changing our minds. He's changing our attitudes. God is just, just going through the motions, if you will, of making us look more and more like his son Jesus and that's something we should always remember and so as, as you may get distracted by the particular trial and the fact that you want God to lift it but God is trying to develop us to look more and more like his son and if that means that he will delay some things in our lives he may delay an answer uh, to many of our requests it doesn't mean he's not working it doesn't mean he's not developing you and so I want you to be encouraged today let's go before the throne of grace eternal God again we thank you for uh, just humble minds and humble spirits today we thank you for a mind just to seek you out and father I just want to pray for my brothers and sisters in Christ I want to pray for those that I uh, haven't seen in a while. I want to pray for those who I've never seen. I want to pray for those who are going through uh, just countless trials uh, in their lives. And they don't understand the trials. Uh, particularly they don't understand you. And they may not understand what you're doing in their lives. But I pray, Father, that you would open up our eyes that we might be able to see that you are a meticulous God, that you are fashioning us in a way that we are just not unable to understand. You're developing us in ways that we can't appreciate right now. You're tearing down strongholds that have been uh, 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 fortified around our hearts and our minds that we might take on more of the characteristics of Christ. Father, we love you for the work that you do. It is a work that no, no other can perform. And you have taken us on, not just to save us, but to make us and develop us into what you would have us to be. And I just pray that you would strengthen the hearers today, that you would strengthen their families today. You know about this pandemic. You know about the trials of homelessness and a lack of food, a lack of finances, and a lack of health and strength. But Father, you are the supplier of all of our needs. Uh, you are not a resource, Father, but you are the source 
of everything that we expect to happen in our lives today. And we are certainly praying for those in leadership and authority that you would give them a mind to do the things that are pleasing in your sight. Father, we thank you most of all for the sacrifice of, of your only begotten son, Jesus portrayed that sacrifice, that image, uh, uh, that he was willing to give his life that we might have this life. He was willing to shed his blood so we wouldn't have to shed ours. He was willing to pay the price that we couldn't pay. And Father, we just pray that you would give us the strength and, and, and help us to stand firm in these last and evil days. And we'll be so careful and mindful to give your name the praise the glory and the honor in Jesus name I ask and pray amen so again we love you all and God bless you all and we certainly are praying that God will continue to sustain us all so until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again we say God bless you <music>